Well, okay, that's... But before we get into the KDE uh, finasco, since we've gone over how distros develop and everything else, this is kind of related to this question somebody asked, uh, which is basically... I say, what was it? Um... Uh, let's give it a Q1, which was how, you know, basically they want to know a good Linux book. You know, basically, I want to know the end all of Linux. I don't have a good, a I, yeah, I don't have a good answer to this because honestly, every Linux, it, it, uh, I mean, if you want to, like, say you want to go learn Photoshop, you go buy Photoshop for dummies. It's like it's like and and that's that's the mentality some people bring to learning Linux. And the reality is I don't think that book actually exists. I mean I know there's Linux for dummies, but Linux for dummies immediately takes you into the terminal. Which is uh, that's the big thing. Uh, the terminal is the part that has probably changed the least in the last twenty years. They they've got yeah. a lot of the same base applications and a lot of new ones that are constantly coming in and changing. But it's the, the, the books that are based on distro X that are very rapidly outdated. I was yeah. at a bookstore this weekend, and uh, the Linux books that they had were, oh, look, this is Ubuntu 9.10 and 8.10 and 8.04. It was, it was a half-price bookstore, so it was slightly outdated, but it was extraordinarily outdated. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the shelf life of any Linux Linux book is about three months. Because by the time they it, get it on the shelf, the time it's most there, if and then, that. look, there's a new distro. Um, actually, and I it think doesn't mean that all the info is, is outdated. It just means that I, I, you're learning something that could be outdated. I, I, actually, we're on, we're on uh, I think, Q3, not Q1. Sorry. But, yeah, it's, it's a good question. Honestly, I can't give a good answer. My honest answer for this, if you want to just learn Linux and get in and you're, like, looking for a tutorial, is... Uh, Google around, uh, search around YouTube, uh, Google around, um, a good place to start for just getting base information would probably be Linux.org, uh, just to get a list of distros if you're having trouble figuring out which one you want to start, start with, you know, for what type of distro, uh, although I, honestly, I find Linux.org less and less useful these days, to be quite honest, unless you're a little bit of a geek. Um, I know when I used to look around a lot, DistroWatch is where I would spend a lot of time. Yeah, just to see the, the DistroWatch is a good place distro, to send people. What news the, the distros were making and things like that. I have a suggestion for learning it that uh, I think one of the best ways, I mean, as for me, the way I learn the best, uh, whatever I'm learning is by doing it. So if you, I mean, I've always heard, and I don't know how true it is, but I've always heard from everybody that if you use Slackware, you learn Linux. So I think that by you could try using really a not a distro that really doesn't help you that much, that doesn't hold you by the hand, and really just trying to get stuff working and debugging and looking and debugging. And as you debug and as you learn to get everything working and get everything running and go through all the errors and problems that you will have and the frustrations, you're going to learn a lot in the process. Why I agree 100% with what you're saying there, I want to put a, a quotation or qualifying mark on that. Um, yeah, it, it's honestly the two ways you learn the most about Linux, and, and this is why one of my things on my to-do list sometime in the next few years is to, even though I don't need to do it, is to sit down and actually do a learn from scratch system. <laughs> and like you say, deal with a distro like a Slackware distro where you have to set all those permissions and everything yourself. Um, however, in this guy's case, he's like, I'm a virgin user. I know absolutely nothing about Linux. Um, fr based on the way this question was phrased, I'm almost thinking this is like somebody is like, the, my understanding level of my computer, and if this isn't the case with this person, I apologize, is I know when I click the button it does something. I don't know what it does, but I know it does it. In which case, yeah. Well, he's a web developer, and he says he knows a little bit about Linux, so I think he knows a lot more than that. Considering uh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, in that, in that case, yeah. Uh, I must be confusing this guy with somebody else then. I, I've got like 12 people I'm constantly talking with. Uh, it's like, as long as you have a base understanding of computers, 
uh, and you're even remotely familiar with ever doing anything in command prompt. With the proper manuals, the approach you're talking about, why it may take you a month of your spare time, you will be infinitely rewarded for it because you will have a deeper, richer understanding of everything. It's, of course, the side effect is every time you click on a GUI, you'll start seeing the terminal code in your head. But it's like, <laughs> it's like oh, oh well. It's like, uh, but yeah, y you will learn it through and out because you'll have to do all that work for you. And you will be qualified to do really good troubleshooting for even the most basic stuff, which is a useful skill. I really wish that was a class in most high schools, colleges, and trade schools because that's really an area that's entirely left out of there. It's like some of the better ones will do both Mac and Windows, but um, I guess if you're familiar with Unix, you can get familiar with Linux, but it's not a one-to-one. -one. Um, and yeah, like you say, you learn by doing. At the end of the day, sit down and decide how much of an expert you want to be. The more stripped down the distro is, the less user friendly it is, the more of that stuff you have to do yourself, the more you will learn. <laughs> if you just want a distro to learn and you're trying to figure out what flavor you like, start with a ready built distro. <laughs> so, and understand this is not going to be an overnight process. I would equate that process to the same amount of time you would invest in a semester at a college course, if not a, a trade school. You know, individual things will take you a month to a few months. Expert level things may take you a year or two. So it, just depending on the pace you can go at. Um, anything else to really contribute on that? or? <laughs> See, as far as learning it, I, I don't know if I would su even suggest somebody go to a, a distro like Slackware or uh, Linux the, the, or anything to start. Uh, 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 yeah, no, that's the thing. It, it's, I, I, it, it's, it, it, it honestly depends how determined they are to learn it. If they're determined to learn it, they will, they will, every time they get stuck, they'll Google, they'll go to the forums, they'll sign, they'll figure it out. If you're good at Montessori teaching and self-teaching, that's a good place to start. If you need a frame of reference to be able to start to get stuff, you're better off to do it in the reverse order, which is start with the user-friendly distro, but learn how and what's doing what, and then slowly scale back to something like that. So it's like, okay, I started with this, now I'm going to... Start with something user-friendly, and, and then, then, okay, yeah. I'm going to update the system. How do I update the system in a more advanced way? Maybe we try it with Synaptic instead on Ubuntu, using rather than using the the update manager or the whatever. Uh, okay, well now that we know how to do that, let's take a step to the terminal. How do we do it in the yeah. terminal? Oh, aptitude's very easy to use. Okay, well now how about apt-get? Okay, we've done, yeah. Yeah, well the, the thing is, for half the users, one way is going to be better, and for the other half the user, the other way is going to be better. Y and you can't say one way or another which one you prefer until you've learned them all. Yeah, that, that's the real truth there. <laughs> that's like, uh, and the, the sad truth is you'll never learn them all, because there's always five new ones coming up. <laughs> You just got your preference for the moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Um, okay, let's see. Do we have time to get into any of these others? Uh, we'll get into the other one in the next set. Uh, I got to do more research on this um, media player one because this is striking me a little weird. Uh, the person's using the Realtek cards, which I know there's a couple of drivers for. Basically, they're complaining that when they're running in Linux or a Hackintosh, when they're using the Realtek cards, their sound is not as sharp as it is in Windows, which I I, I don't know if y'all can think of a reason that would be. I have a Realtek card here. It sounds just as good in Linux as it does in Windows. So, um... Uh, let's see. On Windows, I use Windows Media... Uh, is this the question I'm reading from that? Yeah, Q2, yeah. Okay. Uh, using WMP11, but he's not mentioning what sort of audio files. I would guess the same ones, but... Well, I'm assuming they're the same files. If he's using different files on each OS, of course they're going to sound different. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. The other thing is uh, it could just be driver differences because Realtek is going to develop for probably for Windows first, maybe not even at all for Mac, uh, and for Linux it's going to be kind of in between. I, yeah, uh, I'm going to say the, the, the Mac, I, I know what the problem is with the Mac. The problem with the Mac is he's running OS X on a system that is illegal to run OS X on, so of course the driver isn't designed for OS X. 
Uh, on the Linux system, uh, that's the thing. It's of course there, there. There's I think three versions of the Realtek cards right now, so maybe he's using the other version. It's like uh, Realtek overall are great cards. Um, what do you say, James? I said that's possible that he's using the wrong driver and it ends up working a bit, but it's buggy. No, yeah, th th that's the thing. Um, it, it, that, that's Linux is one of the few operating systems where you can actually do that. A, a Linux-based operating system, and that you can have the wrong driver and you will still get result. If you have the wrong driver in Windows, that thing ain't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that, that little warning symbol. <laughs> <laughs> which sometimes, actually, uh, which sometimes you're to, supposed to uh, ignore in Linux. There, there are so many different sound systems. Uh, there's actually a guy that I talk to in my IRC channel all the time. His name is Sean. He is telling me about how uh, Pulse Audio, according to him, is, is just terrible and everybody needs to be using OSS. It's an older audio system, but it apparently gives you a lot closer to the, to the original sound than you would see out of Ulsa or Pulse. So that could have something to do with it. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I didn't get which distro this person's on. I think they're on Ubuntu. It's like, uh, uh, sometimes, it's, this is different in every system, but if you go into your system's manager, and Ubuntu has a similar thing, or Ubuntu-based distros do too, and the PC Linux is the PC control center, but you go into the thing where you see the hardware settings and stuff, go into your sound settings, sometimes in there, there'll be a drop-down menu in which there's more than one, like you say, OSS or Pulse. Like you can you can run the audio various ways. If you're having sound qualities and it's like it's just not sounding right to you, go in there, see if there's like I had one sound card, there were actually five options. And I went through the various ones and I found the one, okay, this one sounds best to me. Uh, because that card supported doing it multiple ways. And so all of them were there. Some people like way X, some people like way Y. Sounds one of those things it's people are real particular about it. It's like some people like sound to sound this way, other people like sound to sound that way. It, it's the same thing with what's the best shape for a mice. This is one of those things, no two people agree. Uh, well, and, and everybody hears audio just a little bit differently. Yeah. Uh, uh, just sort of like. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I have horrible problems with sound because I can hear the thing. I, I, I can hear the ultrasonic frequencies, so... Um, it, it, I set my audio a little, uh, I, I always rebalance my audio on a computer because it sounds differently than it does in real life because I hear the, the frequencies from the speakers that most people don't hear. <laughs> um, which is a little annoying actually, but anyways. <laughs>